This is part three of the lecture on viruses. Uh, I, I'm sorry. This is part six on the lecture on viruses, and this will be the last part. Um, we have gotten to, to the point where we're talking about um, COVID-19 and there we go. All right, so this shows a picture of the symptoms and where they occur in the body. Um, if you've done any reading on COVID-19 at all, you know that everyone doesn't get every symptom. Um, but there usually is a low grade fever along with the headache, um, a cough. This is presented in the early stages. There can be myalgia, which is pain in the upper and lower arm, shortness of breath. Um, and this happens toward the middle and the end stages. Pneumonia, definitely toward the end stages. And then septic shock, renal failure. Um, sometimes diarrhea during any part of the disease, but septic shock and renal failure would be at the very end phases of um, the disease. And everyone doesn't even get to the pneumonia stage. And if they do, sometimes it's just mild pneumonia. Um, and one more thing. Sorry, working from home sometimes, my family comes in and things like that. So um, the last one that I had forgotten to say about this one is hemoptysis means coughing up blood, hemo um, for hemoglobin, which is found in your blood. So that's coughing up blood that can happen sometimes too with this disease. Okay. So the structure of the virus that causes COVID-19 is that um, it is a single-stranded RNA positive sense core. It's got a single-stranded RNA core. And that means that its RNA is already in the form of messenger RNA. And it contains genes for producing the um, nucleocapsid which, is, which are these structures here that are attached to the um, RNA core. And it contains genes for producing the membrane, and it contains genes for producing the envelope and um, for producing the spikes. So there are genes in this single-stranded messenger RNA molecule for producing all of these components. Um, The spike has a, an angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor, and it has a receptor binding domain. So um, it's got an enzyme, angiotensin converting, to, converting enzyme 2 receptor, and then it's got a receptor binding domain. And um, how that works with the host cell is, is just that um, the S1 spike binds with the receptor binding protein on membrane receptors. So the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptors are these. Okay. So, um, So what that's saying is this, this part is found on the host cell. And then this part is the part of the spike, the S1 or S2 spike that is found on the virus. Okay. So just like we've learned about all the other, you know, other viruses, there's always some type of um, glycoprotein, which is normally a spike um, that, um, sticks out of the envelope or the capsid of the virus, and that will bind to a receptor on the host cell. Now, in coronavirus, as well as um, 
there are others like this too. I mean, we had H1N1, um, you know, the avian flu. Um, what they have found with the SARS coronaviruses, because even the one back in 2002 um, was like this, is that they seem to be coming from bats and then maybe even um, being transmitted from bats into some intermediate host. I mean, this looks like an armadillo, but I've heard that the host could be, I only remember this because I think they're called civets. Um, <laughs> I've heard that can be one of the intermediate hosts, and that is the um, the little animal that um, they make this really gourmet coffee. Um, I forget what the name of the coffee is. I I have had it before, believe it or not. I've ordered it by mail because I just wanted to say that I had it. But um, it's actually coffee that has fermented inside of this little animal, and when the animal uh, uses the bathroom, you know, um, in its excrement. Um, that's where the um, coffee is found. And so they actually make the coffee from fermented, um, you know, coffee that's been digested by this little animal. Um, and it's, it's considered the best coffee in the world by many, many people. It's very expensive. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But that's one of the intermediate hosts that I've read about. Um, and there are others, but the, the original host is thought to be a bat. And then um, eventually it gets transmitted to humans and humans can spread it to other humans by um, droplets or direct con contact, either by coughing or by direct contact. And so now we're at the stage where humans can transmit it to humans. The way that viruses um, become animal, like an animal such as a bat, so it's a bat coronavirus. Um, <clears throat> the way it becomes a human virus that can actually attack human cells is that it mutates. Sometimes it will, when humans come in close contact with animals, and this happens a lot in um, with livestock, you know, like people who work with on turkey farms and chicken farms and hog farms, you know, they're going to have more um, chances of coming into contact with the mucous membranes, you know, basically of these animals. Um, and, and so if they have a virus, it, they can't necessarily transmit it to humans right away. But if that virus gets inside of a human, enters human cells, and somehow mixes with a human coronavirus that is very similar, then what you can have is, um, this way I know to say it is kind of like an overlap. You have some, some of the virus, like a new virus can form that has components from the bat coronavirus and the human coronavirus. So now you have a coronavirus that can be transmitted from humans to humans that originated in a bat. <clears throat> this is the genome of the coronavirus that causes COVID-19, and it just shows you this is the entire single-stranded RNA, which of course serves as the messenger RNA, and um, these are the pieces and what they code for. So this gene codes for a papain-like protease, this one codes for 3CL protease, this one codes for a replicase, a helicase, um, some of these, I, you, I don't require that you know what all of these are, but helicase is one that we learned about in Bio 111, and that is the one when DNA replicates, it has to unwind and unzip first. So helicase is, is going to be an enzyme that unwinds and unzips the DNA. So where does that come into here? Because this is single-stranded RNA. Well, if you remember, the single-stranded RNA from this virus is it acts as and it serves as the messenger RNA. And then that messenger RNA is used to produce, um, to produce proteins. So um, so somewhere along the way, something needs to be unwound and unzipped, and that's where helicase comes in. 
Um, endoribonuclease uh, is another um, enzyme that is produced. And then this is the gene that produces the spikes, the S1 and the S2 spikes. So basically, you have a, a messenger RNA molecule, a single-stranded RNA molecule that contains the genes for all the enzymes that are needed by the virus um, and for all of the components of the virus, um, such as the, the spikes, the glycoprotein spikes that bind to the receptors on the host cells. Okay, and this is has lots of information. I encourage you to go ahead and copy and paste this to your um your um URL bar, you know, and go ahead and start reading through this information. Um, this is where I got the figures from, and there is so much good information in the reading. Um, if you would like to understand coronavirus better, this is to me is a great place to go. It does use information from the World Health Organization and the National Institutes of Health. And I understand that there's a whole lot on social media about conspiracies and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know what? This is where our information is coming from. And I choose not to sit around and try to figure out conspiracies based on what I read off of social media. Um, I'm not saying that there's not some kind of conspiracy, but until, I mean, I don't understand it. I don't know about it, and I'm not going to teach about it in this class, but I have read a lot of information, and this is easy to read. It's easy to understand, and it's really good um, for explaining, but the reason I'm going to cover this information more even when we get into the respiratory system is there's a lot of terminology that it, if you haven't had it in class, you, you wouldn't understand it. So um, for right now, that's going to be it for coronavirus and COVID-19, but we will continue to talk about um, COVID-19 throughout the course. Um, and now we're talking about a disease causing, this is totally not a virus, <laughs> but another infectious agent that can cause disease is called a prion. A prion is just a protein. It is a mutated protein. And it, typically, a prion will cause some type of um, neural um, disease of the nervous system. Um, mad cow disease is really um, one that people know about. Spongiform encephalopathy. It just means that the brain tissue turns kind of spongy and fatty. And uh, mad cow disease. is an example of a prion disease. And then viroids are not viruses. They are simply single-stranded RNA pathogens, that they're only composed of single-stranded RNA, and they are only pathogens for plants. The viroids only infect plants. Um, these potatoes, it shows what they look like. They've been infected by the PSTV um, viroid. And I'm um, not sure what that stands for. I'm sorry, I didn't look it up, so I'm, I'm not prepared for that. But um, you could look it up if you want to. Um, but anyway, it is a viroid that only in, infects potatoes. The P stands for potatoes. And um, obviously, they don't look normal. You know, they have, <laughs> they have a kind of a weird-looking appearance. So um, that is the end of our lecture. It's a little bit before our 15 minutes, but this will be the last part of our lecture on viruses.